has everything said, I'm also from the Centre des Sciences du Goût et de l'Alimentation at Dijon in France, and um, I'm a PhD student there under the tutoring of Pascal, who did the previous presentation. And my presentation will be about a modified CRISPR framework for the analysis of multiple response data with an application to free comment and check all that apply data. So, as a recall, here are the data uh, under interest. So we are recruiting a panel of consumers and each of these consumers evaluate usually the same sets of uh, products. And for each of these products, a consumer provide a vector of citation, which, which are the descriptors the consumer judges um, as describing the product and their interest. So here are how the data could be summarized. So uh, each line corresponds to a consumer and a product. So this is the evaluation of one product by one consumers. And then you have on the right the indicator matrix, which indicates whether the descriptor was cited for the corresponding evaluation with a one or a zero if the descriptor was not cited. And usually these data are summarized into a contingency table crossing products and descriptor, um, which summarizes the number of times each descriptor was cited for, for each product at the panel level. And then uh, key square based analyses are usually performed such as quick cross test, notably correspondence analysis, and sometimes key square test per se. However, uh, some limitation might be uh, underlined for uh, these analyses because uh, when using the usual CRISPR framework, some information are not taken into account. Uh, the first one is that one station is considered as an experimental unit, which means that we are losing the information that some of them come from the same evaluation, which means that they are provided by the same consumer for the same product. Uh, the expected count uh, under the new, the new hypothesis of homo homogeneity between the products uh, depends on the number of stations the products uh, receive. Uh, so the, the, the new model is not exactly the one that should be uh, used. And also the consumer structure of the data is lost. So uh, from a practical point of view, which are the consequences of this limitation? I built an example from a CATA questionnaire where 70 consumers evaluated four products, uh, P1 to P4, according to eight descriptors, D1 to D8. And I created an artificial product, which I call P5, who has attribute citation frequencies exactly one half of those of P4. And here are uh, the analysis coming from the usual Kisper framework. So you can see first on the correspondence analysis map that uh, P5 and P4 are unable to be indifferenced by the usual correspondence analysis. And second, that um, we, we could have uh, inconsistent and counterintuitive outputs um, from the, the key square, the test per cell, sorry, because for example, here the 25% is highlighted while the 28 is not, uh, which sounds weird as uh, every product was um, virtually evaluated by the same number of consumers. So if 25 is highlighted, 28 should be also highlighted. So uh, the topic of the presentation is how to solve these limitations. So to solve them, I introduced the, the multiple response key square framework, which co-differences uh, with the usual key square framework is the observation that is considered between the two frameworks. Here in the usual key square framework, uh, the observation that is considered is one citation provided by one subject for one product. So here you can see an evaluation and here is a single observation. And here in the multiple response key square framework, the entire evaluation of one subject for one product is considered as an observation. These differences in observation uh, impacts the number of expected citation we have under a new, new hypothesis. Uh, as you can see here in the usual key square framework, this uh, expected citation depends on the number of citation we say by the product pay, which means that the propensity of a product to elicit more citation uh, as an impact of the number of expected citations, which shouldn't be, has the number of expected citation is only a function of the 
probability of a descriptor to be cited in a single evaluation and also the number of time a product was evaluated. And here are the key square statistics in the two framework. And as you can see, when you change the uh, number of citation with the number of evaluation, uh, they are the same, except that you have to replace uh, at each time uh, evaluation, citations by evaluation. And this is the same for the general term of the matrix submitted to some valor, singular value decomposition to perform the correspondence analysis. So here are some tools I developed in the uh, usual key square framework, which are perfectly transposable from the usual key square framework to the multiple response key square framework, and which helps interpretation of uh, Chicago data apply and free common data. So uh, this equation is uh, unable to determine the dimensionality of the association between products and sensory descriptors. Uh, by uh, with K being the number of uh, the MSCA axis, which stands for uh, multiple response correspondence analysis, which is the dimensionality of the full space. Here is the uh, key square uh, statistic of the contingency table corresponding to uh, the last axis of the correspondence analysis. He is the total number of evaluation and lambda y is the EF engine values of the MSR. And uh, when we set k egal 1, we end up with the Amer key square statistic of the observed contingency table, which is uh, defined in this article and which is the, the basis of this work. And when you set K uh, larger than one, you end up with the multiple response key square statistic of the contingency table corresponding to the grand K minus little k plus one axis. Um, unfortunately, the, um, the distribution under the hypothesis of this statistic is very complicated uh, asymptotically. So I developed a Monte Carlo procedure to uh, establish the distribution under the null hypothesis. So it is based under, uh, on permutations. Uh, so each evaluation at the individual level, that, which means for each subject, are permitted without permitting the label. The data are then aggregated at the panel level. The procedure repeated a large number of times. And for each of these simulated contingency table, the uh, key square statistics at from K are uh, computed, which enable approximated the distribution under HDO, and then a p-value is computed as the proportion of permitted uh, statistics larger than the observed one. Then this information is used uh, in all subsequent analyses. The first one of, the, of these analyses is uh, deriving confidence ellipses for the product coordinates in the MSCA space. So uh, it is based on a total bootstrap procedure where the Proclus rotation are only performed on the significant axis to avoid overestimating uh, the uh, underestimating, sorry, the variability of the products. Then as we usually are looking at only the first two dimension of the factorial analysis, uh, I derived, I derive the test to, to investigate if two products are discriminated in the whole significant space, which is based on a linear discriminant analysis uh, on the significant aspect, on the significant axis also. And um, for each pair of products, uh, an LDA uh, analysis is performed, then the bootstrap replicate projected on the axis resulting from the LDA. And the quantities of the pair differences between replicates are computed and the position of zero is, is uh, regarding this quantity is computed. And if zero does not belong to the interval, uh, the, the, the use alpha risk, then the two products are considered different. Finally, the last question we want to answer is um, given a total of E evaluation with a P of them coming from product P, and ND of them containing the descriptor D, to which extent the number of citations for product P and descriptor D we observed might have occurred by chance. So this is also based on the Monte Carlo um, approach. So for which of the consumer, an evaluation one is randomly selected among each of them, then the corresponding um, NPD are computed and the procedure repeated a large number of times. Then uh, the proportion of randomly sampled NPD are 
more having a more extreme value than the observed one are using as a p value you can do that two sided or not depending on uh, the new hypothesis you have then replacing p by p prime another product repeating the procedure and then for each products it enables uh, investigating if uh, the descriptor characterizes or not the product uh, and to account for the dimensionality in, in this analysis, it is proposed to um, compute the derived contingency table corresponding to uh, the significant axis following the reconstitution formula of the MSCA, and then considering the resulting NPD as being the observed one, and following simulation results, this has been shown to provide a gain of power without any inflation of the type one error. Uh, so now from a practical point of view, as are we are solving the problem we were looking for? So the answer is yes, because now on the same example, we can see that on the right, uh, P5 is differentiated from P4 with the multiple response P square framework, which is uh, logical. And because uh, P5 has been constructed by P4, you can see that it, uh, it deviates from the null model on the same direction, but with a, to a lesser extent because we are it has less uh, proportion of citation for which descriptors. And also we can see here that uh, on the left P5 and P4 were not differentiated also, but they are now in the multiple response key square framework. And also now um, still the, the 28 person is not uh, highlighted, but now the 25 is not highlighted either, which is consistent and logical. So as a conclusion, I would say that uh, the usual CRISPR framework is not the, is not the most suited uh, for analyzing check the data and free common data. Uh, the multiple response CRISPR framework is most suited because it considers vectors of citation as observation, which is more in line with how the data are collected. Uh, the multiple response CRISPR framework is provided with exactly the same tool as the usual one, uh, a CRISPR test, a correspondence analysis, and the CRISPR test per cells. And it is uh, supported by a package available on GitHub and by a publication which includes more examples if you are interested in the framework. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you very much for this uh, very complete and extensive presentation. And uh, thank you for the reference to the paper because it uh, could be quite uh, useful to to look at uh, this uh, great paper for detail. And uh, I don't know if uh, there are some questions in the chat, no, but we have not a lot of time for question. Um, is there somebody who, no question? Yes, John. Hi, Benjamin, very nice talk. Um, I, I, I guess I wanted to ask, uh, you know, first of all, I love the way that you created the motivating example there of the, uh, you know, of, of the uh, uh, biplot that's kind of showing the, uh, the overlapping of the, uh, of the two products. That's, that's a really nice illustration. And what I noticed is, is that when you resolve that problem, the location moved uh, of, of that second product, uh, I think you called it P5, and also the confidence ellipse shrinked shrunk around it um, and I'm wondering if that's a general example if that is a something that would always happen something that is uh, generalizable that uh, a product that has fewer citations would you expect it to have a smaller confidence ellipse uh, and I was wondering if you could just discuss that um, I, I do not think it is a, a general uh, thing that I, it is because in this example, um, something I didn't show, but uh, which I might have shown is that um, the, the variability of P5 is more on the third axis, which basically opposes P5 to uh, hold the other products with the loadings of the descriptors uh, pointing um, to every other product because this third axis expresses that P5 received uh, less uh, citation as compared to every other product. And so um, why the ellipses were shrinked on the first plane is because the, the main variability for P5 is most expressed on the third axis rather than the, the two first ones. Okay. Thank you. And um, so 
um, Benjamin, if I have well understand, the key point is to define statistics based on the number of evaluation and not on the number of citation. Is it right? Yes. Yes, and it's very interesting to take into account multi-response uh, data. So uh, it's uh, it's quite interesting to see the results. Okay.